Alright guys, um, welcome to this October 27th, 2021 recap of the Timberwolves and the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, such a giant W for the Timberwolves tonight after that kind of dreadful loss against the Pelicans. Um, you know, we won 113-108. to 108. It was a really, you know, big lead at, lead at times. It was also a very small lead at times, as you guys saw at the end of the game. But um, we'll jump right into the stats to start out with. Um, so... You know, the thing that really stuck out to me was obviously the big three tonight. They combined for, you know, a lot of points. Um, a lot of points. We got to get the math guy in here. Um, it's looking like 79 points, Chris, they combined for. <laughs> 79 points. That, that's a good number. Yeah. Ant 25, Towns 25, D'Lo 29. Obviously, you know, the big story was D'Angelo Russell having that comeback game. Um, you know, starting out the first quarter, man, D'Lo started out four for four and guns a-blazing. He was on a mission, man. You could tell that he was not okay with the slander that he was getting, and he wanted to come out there. He, I think he shot on the first possession. No, maybe I think he maybe shot the second possession, but he came out there and hit his first four shots, I think. Yeah, and he was just guns blazing from the start, and he didn't he didn't let up the rest of the game. Yeah, and also it was really nice to see Ant kind of complimenting that yep. really good start from D'Lo. I thought him and Ant were kind of the two that were taking over the game almost to an extent to start the first half um you know there's a reason we scored 44 and D'Lo had 15 to start and I think Ant had nine or ten um but the kind of the left out member of the big three that we didn't really see too much honestly no. was Cat and yeah I think what really attributed to that was I think he was focused a lot on defense tonight um he had to guard Pat Connaughton which was a little interesting what do you think <laughs> about that I mean, that's, yeah, it's a big matchup for him, but um, yeah, I thought it was really interesting before the game, me and you were speculating that he was going to be the one guarding Antetokounmpo, but it didn't look that way. And um, speed, just in the beginning of the game, I think the thing about Cat that makes him such a special player is he's not, he's okay being the second player. He's okay being the second star. And sometimes like tonight, he's okay being the third star. So when he saw D'Lo and Ant just really taking over, I think he was okay taking a back seat and really just letting them go to work because both those guys, they need the ball in their hands and they are high volume scorers when they're, when they're on. So I think, I don't know. I think I, it showed a lot of, of growth of him as a player that he could take the back seat for them, at least in the first half. Yeah. A, a really quiet 25 from cat, honestly, but really efficient at the same time, you know, nine of 13, three of five from three um, miss, actually missed a free throw finally. And finally. The, the really weird stat from cat was the rebounding. He only had three rebounds. Um, you know, we talked about this earlier. He was on Pat Connaughton, and I think the reason for him only having three rebounds, obviously Vando grabbed 13, um, Big Mac grabbed 11, but Vando was um, guarding, you know, Giannis the entire game, and Giannis is obviously their main rebounder. So he was crashing the glass. Vando's going to have to put a body on him, and that's that's why Vando grabbed more rebounds. Um, I don't really think I'd look too much into Cat's three rebounds. No, if you're looking into Cat's rebounds, if you're, if you're, like, if you're pulling stats like that, to complain about in this game, then come on, man. Like that, that, like he played such an overall great game despite that, that like that, I feel like that's nitpicking for, I've seen it on Twitter too, by a lot of people. I just feel like that's nitpicking. And especially when those other guys are grabbing so many rebounds, um, there's just not going to be many rebounds left to grab, but um, you know, they did have a lot of offensive rebounds. I felt so if he, I mean, he could, he definitely could uh, improve on his rebounding for sure, but I'm not, yeah, you're right. It's not a big, uh, big issue at all. Yeah. So going into the buck stats, um, you know, it's hard to miss the one guy. Uh, Giannis was 15 to 23, three from six from three point land and 16 rebounds, seven assists, three blocks. You know, Giannis Jesus. was doing it all 40 points tonight. Um, that's just Giannis. He's going to dominate. He's going to get his, but the, the biggest, the bigger storyline actually from the bucks, I thought, was he wide open mysteries and, and, you know, Chris Middleton struggling. Um, Chris Middleton shot six of 16 and one of eight from the three point line, only 16 points. If, if you're going to have Drew Holiday and Brooke Lopez, two of your starters be down, you really need your second star to shine. And Chris Middleton was not very helpful tonight. You know, he hit, he had a couple big shots actually down the, the fourth biggest. Yeah, he hit a huge we'll, shot. We'll, yeah. We'll get to that. And, Man, it seemed like every time Grayson Allen, Connaughton, or Grant Hill touched the ball and shot a three, 
we knew it was going to be off. Like it was, yeah. it was absurd. You know, the more open they were, the more likely they were, were to miss it. It felt like exactly, you know, George Hill was only one of three. Connaughton was two and nine from the three point land and Grayson Allen is three, eight. You're, you're when you're wide open, you know, those look like from the surface level, those aren't off terrible. Yeah. But like when you're wide, what this doesn't show you is they were wide open on a lot of those shots and you got to hit over 50% wide open the NBA. I don't, I don't care what anyone says. So that, that was, that and not having a backup big man, I think Milwaukee almost shot, they shot themselves in the foot at times too. Yeah, I mean, you could you could make the argument that the Bucks lost themselves the game because they weren't able to hit those wide open shots that we were giving them. We were giving them two and three opportunities per second and third opportunities in a, in many possessions. They had a few possessions where they shot three three pointers and missed all three of them. So, I mean, we won the game, but at the same time, they uh, they didn't do a great job of winning it for themselves either. And when you, I mean, when I look at that stat line, I see Giannis with 40 points. And for me, when I look at before the game, the game plan is, you know what? Giannis is going to get his. He's going to get 30. He might even get 40. But as long as you don't let anyone else beat you, you're going to win that game because 40 points doesn't win an NBA basketball game. So that's kind of what it felt like the Timberwolves game plan was, and we did a hell of a job shutting everyone else down. Yeah. Um, you know, sleeper from the game, obviously was, was Jared Vanderbilt, um, oh, yeah. 13, 13 rebounds, three assists, uh, steal, a couple of deflected passes, 10 points. Um, I think Vando solidified his four spot and I don't, I don't know if he got the opportunity over, um, you know, a Kogi due to matchup purposes, or if he just earned it in practice. And it, in my opinion, it, it did look like he deserved to be out there from what he showed me um, tonight. And yeah. we don't know. We don't know why a Kogi wasn't in no. the game. Um, we can't speculate until more news comes out. But, but yeah, I'm sure there had to have been a reason because for a Kogi not to play one minute when he's really a defensive specialist for him not to play at least one minute in that game, there had to have been something maybe I don't I just it doesn't seem right that a player would start the first three games and then not play a minute in the fourth game for no reason um but yeah speaking on Vando I think he's really solidified his spot as our starting four for the time being but Chris I don't I don't know if he's the the uh the solution for our problem at the four for if we want to be a a make a big run in the playoffs I think we might need to make some more moves still but I think for the time being Vando he really solidified himself, especially with this game. Yeah, uh, we can get into it later, you know, when we do a Timberwolves talk in the future. But I really think once once we start winning a couple more games here and players start to see that this team is a playoff team, I think we will be an active team at the deadline. I, I, I don't think that'll be an issue to grab some bets that, you know, will want to make the playoffs. Um, touching just a little bit more on stats was, you know, was we really want to talk about Malik Beasley. Um see if he could get out of his slump just like D'Lo. And, you know, I don't think he fully achieved that tonight, and the numbers mm-hmm. don't show it. Two for six from the three-point line, six points. But I think the confidence may be coming back a little bit. I, I like to see him shooting out there. He seemed pretty aggressive. He seemed like he wanted to get out of his uh, slump just as much as we wanted him to. And for everyone that's saying trade Malik, all this stuff, guys, come on. Malik Beasley, he's shown it for us for the last two seasons that he can be a very competent Six man player off the bench, he can give you 20 a game. I mean, he's a very streaky player. So I think that we just need to have some patience with him. Um, he had a tough summer. I think I think he's gonna be okay. No need to give up on Malik because everyone else is stepping up right now in his absence. Yeah. Um, so kind of working into the game a little bit more. We talked about this, but you know, we we outscored them 44 to 34 in um, you know, in the first quarter, and right. they kind of made I guess a little run, not, not too big though. They outscored us 24 to 22 in the second quarter. They cut, we were, we were actually up by 20 at one point, but you know, they cut the lead down to eight at half. Um, you know, it, it is what it is there. And we, we had a very good third quarter um, outscoring them 28 to 21. We extended the lead back to 18, but what kind of killed us was the end of the third in the beginning of the fourth. I don't know what happened. Actually the, the end of the fourth too. actually most of the fourth, um, we kind of just, they outscored us 29 to 19 um, yeah. down the stretch. It seemed like Middleton finally got it going during the game. Um, he was quiet so much during, like he was, like we said, he was missing shots, but once he, once he got into the mid range, started doing some of those post fadeaways, um, he, he seemed to get a little back in the rhythm there. Yeah. Um, 
again, that that um, end of the third quarter going into the start of the fourth is a, is a time that we really struggle as a team. And I don't know if it's the lineups that we keep putting out there. I don't know if it's the uh, – I don't know what it is, but I feel like every single game we struggle right there. Would you not agree? Yeah, and, you know, sometimes that's just basketball. Like, yeah. uh, you know, basketball is a streaky sport. You know, runs are going to happen each way multiple times throughout the game. And it's it's pretty rare. You just often see a team dominate the entire team, the, like the whole game without a stretch right. of, you know, letting off a little bit. But I, yeah. I thought I thought what was, you know, characteristic of this team was was Ant's bucket. You know, that was oh. that and one to get us to a five point game or four at the time. But. The ant and one man, we got so hype on the live stream. Um, it was, it was kind of what won us the game. Yeah, it, yeah, you know, we we got that to a. He missed a free throw, so it was just one ten to one oh six. Um, Giannis comes right down with twenty seconds left, makes a euro step layup, and you know it was a little scary. Ant getting trapped in the corner there. Um, you know, on the throw and thought they were going to call a timeout. You know, Ant goes the line, knocks both of them down. Um, and that was kind of the game. And we all kind of knew once we, once we had the five point lead that, yeah, we just, we just beat the bucks at home. And that's, it's so monumental for this team's confidence. And what I kind of mentioned to you, you know, Peyton and I went to the Pelicans game in person at target center. What I mentioned to Peyton and in the, and in the recap was that loss might be the reason why they won this game. Maybe if they won last game by a little bit, they would have still played sloppy this game and not had that intensity or passion. But that loss, I think, won them this game. I definitely think they had something to prove for sure. And you could tell, like, the certain players that had rough games against the Pelicans were the ones that stepped up. Cat, um, everyone was t- talking about how he was complaining so much to the refs against the Pelicans. I think he did a, a great job keeping his mouth shut. You didn't see any um, any times during the game of the camera on him like those. <laughs> None of that. He was very uh, he was very poised and calm, and I think that helped the team. I want to get into a little uh, little segment here right before we end end this episode. What was the the biggest positive of the game for you? Um, what is one thing in the game? It doesn't need to be a player. It can be a a play. It can be a play. It can be a a sequence just what is the one positive that you want to take away from this game i really do think um obviously the big positive from this game was getting d'angelo russell in rhythm you know mm-hmm. it, th- that jump out in the first quarter i think really propelled us to the win you know 44 points is a lot of points in the grand scheme of things when you're winning 113 to 108 so in order you know that first quarter quarter scoring outburst that we happened to do a, a lot last year at the end of the year you know, propelled us, but I also want to give credit to Bando too, because, you know, I thought he handled the four position really well and helped out with rebounding, even when we were getting out rebounded at the end. I think he was a vital part of that. Yeah, I think Vando's a great option for me. Um, I'm going to go more into not necessarily a player, but I want to um, go into the D'Angelo Russell pick and roll sequence that we had. I don't know if it was in the second quarter, but when Nas Reed was in the game with D'Angelo Russell, it was beautiful. He had about three possessions right in a row. The first one came down. I think he hit a mid-range. The pick and roll, the defender dropped, hit the mid-range like they were doing all game. They were dropping down on the on the pick and roll wide open. Next next possession down, comes down, bounce pass to Nas Reed, layup. Next possession comes down, and then he goes up for the layup himself because the defender dropped even more because he was anticipating the pass. And I think he ended up missing the layup, but I think just that sequence show, just shows how good of a playmaker D'Angelo Russell was. And when he gets his confidence going – It's going to be crazy, man. Watch out, man. It's going to be crazy. I guess, like, you know, upcoming after that big win, we still got a couple more big games to go. Um, You know, we got the Nuggets coming up here on Saturday, and we got the Magic, who aren't just going to be a pushover team. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to have to work on Monday and then the Clippers for two games. So these games are going to be tough. Um, They're going to have to grind them out. Nuggets injured, Clippers injured, but, you know, any any given day in the NBA. Um, So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this recap of the Bucks Timberwolves game. Like we said, we're going to be doing these all year. Um, this will be out on all platforms, YouTube, Spotify, Apple podcast, any podcasting app that you can think of, this will be out on, but you know, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.